Okay guys, uh, Terry Pike here with this 2006 Suzuki Forenza. It's wrapped up and uh, just to complete this whole video series, I uh, just wanted you guys to see the engine running. Give you uh, some little things about the uh, idle relearn procedure. Uh, I've kind of gone through that. I've uh, topped off the coolant here. Everything is looking good. No leaks. Everything is sounding fine. Let me go ahead and crank it up. Okay, sounds pretty good. Uh, now, what, let me let you know now, when you first crank this thing up, there's going to be a lot of smoke that's going to be coming off the exhaust manifold because you know there was like uh, some PB blaster on there, so that's going to burn off. There's going to be a little bit of excess oil, let's say, down in the cylinders, so you may see some smoke coming out of the, uh, you know, out of the tailpipe. Um, also, one other thing you want to be aware of is that when I first cranked it up, that the valves were really rattling. And uh, what I did is I just, uh, you know, let it stay up about 1500 RPM. What I was doing to maintain that 1500 RPM is I was just using an accelerator pedal. Uh, basically this thing hooks around the steering wheel, and then down here is on the accelerator pedal. Then you can just work it up to whatever RPM that you want. So I just let it sit there, and it gradually started getting better and better as far as the valves, uh, you know. So as the, the lifters were getting uh, pumped up, it was getting better and better and better, and it took about 10 minutes before it actually where it is right now. So it's uh, it's actually really quiet. You can hear it running right now. It's not shaking, not missing. Um, and I think one more thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take to look at. Uh, Put a scanner on here just to make sure that there's no codes like we'll say if the timing belt when it did break you know then maybe there's a camshaft sensor code in there well now there's no check engine light but uh, maybe it's one that's stored in there as a history so I'm just going to hook up a scanner take a look at that make sure that looks okay and also I'm going to take and hook up a scope I'm going to get a crank and a cam sensor uh, signal off of here for as a reference uh, I never did get one uh, I did in the past, I got some others like TPS signals, a map sensor, those kind of things, but I don't believe I got a cam and crank, so I'll get those uh, signals. I'll show you that uh, scanner and the, uh, the picoscope with the two signals there, and I think we'll wrap it up. One more last thing, I got the wheel on over here, just uh, as a complete lug nuts got them torqued up torque setting on these is 74 foot pounds okay if you look at the very top up here it says that you got to do an idle relearn procedure if you do any one of these here four things if you replace the ecm that's your computer if you replace the throttle body or if you clean it well we did clean the throttle body and if you disconnect the battery cable or if you pull out an ecm fuse any one of those things you do, then you're going to have to do a relearn. Now, here's where it says turn the ignition on, and then you reset the adaption values using the scan tool. Well, I don't have a Suzuki uh, factory scan tool to reset that. <clears throat> so what I did is I, hook, of course, hook up the battery, switches off. Now, so at this point, the ignition switch is off anyway. So we went on down here to number four. Turned the ignition on for five seconds. I did do that. All right, then I turned the ignition off for 15 seconds. I did do that. Then we started the engine in park. All right, did that. Now we allowed it to run until the engine coolant got up to 185 degrees. And what I did is I just let it go up until it just stabilized, which is uh, right at the middle. Temperature gauge is right in the middle between cold and hot. So once that was done and I knew it wasn't going anymore, then I turned and turned the AC on for 10 seconds. All right, then after that, then I took and put the vehicle in drive. While you're holding the brake pedal, put it in drive. Now the air conditioner is on also at this point. Now once you do that, then put the turn the AC off for 10 seconds. Then at that point, then you want to take and turn and put it back in park, right? Which is what I did. Then I turned the ignition switch off, and it says at this point the idle learn procedure is complete. And I've turned it off and on, cranked it up, and it seems to idle pretty good. Okay, I got the scanner hooked up. 
Uh, right now I want to show you, see there's no diagnostic codes in there, so that's a good thing. I got some live data set up here. I, I don't know how well this is going to show up. We got a coolant temperature right here. This is 198 degrees. Over here I'm looking at the short term uh, fuel trim. It's running uh, 3%. Okay, it's 1.5. That looks pretty good. Long term is 5.46. Uh, right here we're looking at uh, the upstream uh, voltage on the sensor, O2 sensor. So uh, it's 0.23 right now. So it's, it's varying. And this is just at idle, so if we turn it and uh, speed it up, uh, th that should, probably, it should fluctuate a lot more. This here is a downstream O2 sensor. That's looking pretty good because you should have a pretty rich value because the uh, catalytic converter is going to be using the oxygen up. So when it uses the oxygen up, this here should be pretty much a flat line. Uh, this one right here is the throttle actuator control. This is showing that it's 4% open. Right here, this is the intake air temperature, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Right here, we're looking at the map sensor. This here is the, uh, the how many inches of mercury, 28.91. That's looking pretty good because we are at an idle, so the throttle valve should be closed, creating a, a lot of vacuum down underneath the throttle valve. Right here, we're looking at the relative throttle position. Going right now is 2%. Now we can also take a look and we can look at the graph on this stuff. Uh, so you see right here the red is the coolant temperature, blue is short term fuel trim, okay? Down here the red is long fuel trim, alright? 5.46 and right here the blue is the uh, the blue is the bank one sensor one, O2 sensor. So that's showing right there, it's varying. Long fuel trim is coming on down. It's about 2.34 2 now. Short fuel trim, about 0 .78 right now, zero. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm thinking uh, everything from what I see right now looks pretty good. Here's another graph of looking at stuff. Okay, looking at all of it. Let's take a look at the engine RPM. Let's see what it's running at. Okay. This took a little while for that to update. So we're running at uh, 788 RPM. Let's take a look at the uh, short fuel trims. That's looking really good now, so the long term is coming on down. So I'm happy with that. It's looking good. Good. 73 on the intake. So everything looks pretty good right now. You can also do a test on, uh, here's one for the evaporative system leak test. Now this over here is the onboard test results. Now of course you got to remember the battery's been disconnected, and in a short amount of time, it's already completed five tests. One of them is misfire monitoring is complete, so that looks okay. It's done a test on the fuel system monitoring is okay. Uh, done a test on the components that looks okay. Uh, it's done a test on the evaporative system uh, fuel system that's okay. And it's done a oxygen sensor heater monitoring. It's done a test on that, and that's okay. Now, these here, this in pink says not complete. So it, the catalytic monitoring hasn't completed that one. Uh, the ones in yellow are not supported. These functions are not supported. So basically, we've got uh, one, two, three. We've got three more tests. It's got to do a test on the EGR system. Uh, it's got to do a test on the oxygen sensor monitoring, and finally, it's got to do a test on the cabin. So, we do a little bit more driving, playing around with this thing, keep it running, and it'll run those tests. So, all this is looking okay. So, I don't see any problems at all. Okay, to finish up this video, we're going to get a signal off of the uh, crankshaft and the camshaft sensors. I'll use that as a reference later on. 
Okay, this right here, this is a crankshaft sensor. It's got a two wires here. This here is a VA, VRS sensor, variable electric sensor. Some people call it a magnetic pickup. Basically, it's nothing but a uh, magnet with a cool wire wrapped around here. As it's here, teeth on the reluctor passes past the, uh, the pole piece here, and it will generate an AC voltage. Uh, where I've got my probe is, I'm on channel A. This right here is the high side of the signal. This is the low. I'm stabbed in right here at this point on the high side. This is the blue and the white wire, and I'll just show you where I'm at so you can see. So you can see that I'm stabbed in here. It might be hard to see, but it's a blue and a white tracer. Okay. Okay, the other signal I want to look at is a camshaft sensor. This is a Hall effect sensor. Now I'm looking at the signal. This is this wire right here. So what I'm looking at is on the violet wire, and that's on channel B. I just show you the connection to where I'm at. I'm, I'm hooked up on uh, the violet wire. This is the signal wire, okay? I just want to show you that I'm using a Pico scope, this four channel scope, 4000 series. And right now we're looking at the signals, okay? Okay, this is channel A right up here. This is the crankshaft sensor. You can see this is the AC signal. These here tall pulses. This is where the sink notch is on the, on the uh, reluctor here. I think it's got 57 teeth here. And these mark out the uh, sink pulses that's on the crankshaft uh, reluctor sprocket. This one down here, this is the camshaft sensor. Zero to five volts on that. That's looking good. These little spikes you see is where it's getting some inductive pickup from off the ignition. So it's nothing to worry about there. But that looks really good. If you guys, uh, if you're interested more in these waveforms about analyzing, I highly recommend you go to autonerds.com. I'll put a, I'll put a text here in the video. Uh, before you buy a scope, uh, give Tom Roberts a call. Uh, very knowledgeable in scopes and he'll give you an unbiased opinion if you have another scope in mind um, You know, he'll give you the ins and outs and, and you know tell you if it's worth it the money um, You know, he, he's a He's a pretty nice guy and also if you go over there to autonerds.com Go into their forums and you can go in there and read up a lot of these texts in here and using the Pico scope and they're talking about analyzing the waveforms what they mean there's a lot of techniques about how to use these waveforms to uh, gather information before you even tear anything down. You know, it, you can tell if the timing belts jump the tooth by just looking between the correlation between this, uh, you know, this crank and this here camshaft sensor uh, signal. There's a lot, of, a lot of information. Uh, one last thing that's really nice about the Picoscope is. Uh, you really don't even have to set up a trigger. You know, I had uh, I had a trigger on here, but you know, you could take it off. We can start it again. Okay, there's no trigger right now. Okay, but you know, you can capture data on it, and then you can just come back and you can zoom in. You know, if you want to look at something, you want to say, "Well, let me look at that right there," and it'll give you a lot of detail here. It has a 12-bit resolution on the vertical resolution, so it gives you some really nice, you know, really nice detail there. And you can keep zooming in and looking at the, looking at the signal. You see that looks pretty good. See how it's all straight across there in amplitude. Same thing down here. You know, you can zoom in down there. Now, like I said, this is where the uh, is picking up the ignition coil the, uh, inductance there. So nothing to worry about on that signal looks really good. You can see it's pulling all the way down to zero. That looks good. You can measure time in here. You can measure voltage. Uh, you want to come down, you know, you want to see some voltages. You know, there you go. You can look at it, see what it is. Uh, let's say if you want to look at the uh, this one right here, what's the voltage on that? So you can look right there. And if you look right up here, it'll tell you. You can also look at the difference between two volts. Like this one down here is a zero volt, right? So you can put it down there, and then you can come back here. 
It'll tell you what your top line is, what your bottom line is, and it'll tell you the difference between the two. It'll give you a delta. Also, I want to make a mention that uh, in both of those signals that I was looking at, the cam and the crank signal, the, uh, the, the negative lead for each one of those signals, both of them were tied back to the battery negative. So I forgot to show you that, but uh, just so you, anybody wanted to uh, wonder about it. Okay, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. So let me give the little doggies a ride and make them happy. I'll see you guys later.